hip flexion, active and passive range of motion. So go ahead and bring your knee up towards your chest. So I'm gonna use the lateral midline of the trunk and the midline of the femur. If you're having a hard time visualizing the uh, osseous landmarks or the midline of the osseous structure, the femur, uh, then you can always palpate lateral femoral epicondyle and use that as a uh, landmark to again, help with alignment during this uh, hip flexion measurement. Uh, let's also measure this passively. So with the shoulder, we talked about monitoring for excessive movement of the scapula or for substitutions from the scapula. We have to treat the pelvis the same way. So when we're measuring hip flexion range of motion, one of the substitutions can be excessive posterior tilting of the pelvis. So I like to palpate ASIS, maybe PSIS if you can reach it, but at minimum ASIS. When I get to the end of the physiological range of the joint, you start to feel the ASIS move superiorly. That's where I decide to spring against the barrier, assess and feel and take my measurement. If I go further, then that's no longer hip motion. It tends to be more pelvic posterior rotation. So right about there is where I start to feel the ASIS move. As long as I hold her leg in this position, I don't have to stabilize the pelvis anymore. I can take my measurement. So we're aligned with the femur and then the lateral midline of the trunk.